Hey everybody and welcome back to Cityscape Brewing. Today I'm really excited to share with you one of the ultimate summer beers, the Mexican Lager. This couldn't get any more of a summer beer. It's clean, it's crisp, it's light, and it's got a, just a hint of lime flavor, so you don't even need a wedge of lime in this one at all. So think Corona on the beach, but you brought the limes already in the beer. We're gonna go through the whole recipe, right down to tasting this one and checking it out, right after you guys hit that like and subscribe button, grab yourself a beer, and let's get after it. So this year I brewed this Mexican lager as part of my homebrew club. We do brew days to teach people how to brew and also just to kind of hang out and get together outside of our homebrew club meetings. This year I themed mine after a Mexican lager, which I planned to do around Cinco de Mayo. That didn't really pan out. I had to go a month later. And so I'm calling this beer Ocho de Junio, which is June 8th, the day that I brewed it. For those of you who don't habla Espanol, El Nino is Spanish for the Nino. At the event, we had all kinds of tacos and nachos and Mexican food. We had the fiesta happening. And at the same time, we were brewing this awesome beer. This is a really easy one, especially for those who are just starting out with all grain brewing, mainly because this is one that you really don't need to add a whole lot of water salts to. This one in a German Pilsner, I really had to add nothing to the water. My water here is actually really good for this style of beer. However, depending on where you live, you may want to check that out. And I have, as always, the link to that video to show you how to do water adjustments and how to check the pH of your mash tun in the video description below. This one, I did need to add a little bit of lactic acid to get that pH down, so that is still important. I also added four grams of ascorbic acid in the mash, which will help with preservation long-term and prevent any oxidation but I really just needed to add a half gram of gypsum on um, both the uh, mash and sparge and one gram of Epsom salt, and that was it. But let's go through the entire recipe. So for this one, it is a Mexican lager. So you're gonna need to use something like flaked corn in order to get that lighter color and still have a lot of those malts up. Turo and Pilsner still have between one and a half and three Lovabond number, which is what gives the color or SRM to your beer. And so for this one, you want to use flaked corn to keep that nice, light, crisp, clean color. So for this, it's a five and a half gallon batch. I used four and a half pounds of Pilsner, two pounds of Vienna malt, three pounds of that flaked corn we were talking about, and about a quarter pound, only four ounces of acidulated malt. That's going to help bring down that pH a little bit, uh, but I still added a little bit of lactic acid. In place of doing the lactic acid, you could add a little bit more acidulated malt, or if you didn't want to add the acidulated malt, you could just add more lactic acid to get that pH down to the acceptable range of about 5.2 to 5.3 in your mash. And as a reminder, you don't need to mill the corn or any flaked ingredients like flaked oats or rye or whatever, right? That's only going to get it really gummed up. So once people arrived at the Fiesta, we got that boil and happened. We started out with three and a half gallons of strike water. That was enough water for the 9.75 pounds of uh, grains that we were gonna do. We, once that got up to temperature, we added our grains in, mixed them up. We were shooting for a mash temperature of 148 degrees Fahrenheit. And the reason that this is important is because the lower that number, the different enzymes that you will be able to unlock. And at a lower temperature, like 148 versus 152, you will have sugars that are easy for the yeast to break down, and therefore it makes the beer drier and a little bit higher ABV. In this case, it's a low ABV beer anyway, but we want that drier, uh, crisper taste to the Mexican lager. You don't want a malty taste for a crisp, light beer such as this one. So 148 might be the max. You could even go a couple points lower if you wanted to, but this one turned out great at 148 degrees. Then as always, as part of my system, we did that one hour mash rest. We did our first runnings. Then I went ahead and I did my normal recirculation and my batch sparge process, and that brought my total boil volume to 7.2 gallons. 
Once it got up to a boil, there's very little hops in this one. We only added a half ounce of Hallow Tower Blanc to make for bittering hops. Again, this isn't a highly bitter beer. It's crisp because a little bit of those hops, but also mainly because of the mash temperature that we had of that 148. And then we had some tacos and some nachos and we waited and watched our pot boil for a while. I also added a tablespoon of yeast nutrient and a Wurflock tablet at the end of the boil with about 10 minutes left in order to make sure that yeast gets healthy and the Wurflock tablet or Irish moss will help drop out any particulates and make that beer clearer over time. We then threw an ounce of hops right at the end with five minutes left in the boil. Those are Motika hops, and Motika hops give that lime flavor to the beer. I've used this in other recipes, it turned out awesome. So we used an ounce of those at five minutes left in the boil, and then we cooled down as normal. For this beer, I made a yeast starter. I'm using White Labs WLP 940, which is their Mexican lager yeast. I think this is an awesome yeast to use for this style of beer. Obviously it's meant for that, but it's also gonna give those clean, crisp flavors that you're looking for and that lager aftertaste. But you don't have to use a lager yeast if you don't want to. The first couple of times that I made a Mexican lager, I made what we call a Mexican faux lager, meaning that I used an ale yeast just at cooler temperatures. And so if you wanted to do that because you don't have as good a fermentation temperature control, you can use USO5 yeast, and then you can actually ferment that at about 58 degrees. It doesn't have to get down to the lower 50s, but if you can reach 58 degrees, that will give it kind of that faux lager taste, if you will. But if you have the ability, I would definitely use a Mexican lager yeast like WOP 940 from White Labs. So we took that one liter starter, I decanted off the spent beer after cold crashing it, so we just had that layer of yeast at the bottom of the flask. I stirred that around real good and pitched that in at the end of the day. So we let this one ferment at 52 degrees Fahrenheit until it got to about 20% or so left in, in attenuation. So at about 1020, I would say 1.020. Then I started slowly ramping up the temperature in my fermentation chamber back here using my Inkbird temperature controller. And so I can do this no matter where I'm at by just going to the Wi-Fi app for the Inkbird and changing that temperature. So in this case, I was actually at work when I ended up changing this one. So I went in, I uh, turned it up a couple of degrees. I was ramping that up every couple of days for two degrees or so, all the way up until I got to about 68 or even 70 degrees. And the reason I do that is for a diacetyl rest. So with lager yeast specifically, it creates that kind of buttery popcorn or butterscotch flavor with yeasts. And you don't want that in your beer. And so in order to do that, you wanna liven up that yeast at the end of the fermentation period in order to kind of help it condition and it will eat up that diacetyl as part of that kind of last process, right? And so if I were to keep it in the 50s and then just started cold crashing it, you could leave behind some of those butters, buttery popcorn or butterscotch flavors, which would not make this a nice pleasant beer. Once I was sure that I had a good diacetyl rest for a couple of days, I went ahead and actually dry hopped this beer. And I wouldn't normally do that for a lager. And so this is pretty unique, uh, but I went ahead and dry hopped with another ounce of the Motika hops. And the reason I did that is just to make sure that when I was drinking this, I could taste that little hint of lime. But I didn't leave those in long, just a couple of days, probably three, and then I pulled those back out and I started to cold crash even more. I cold crashed this thing all the way down to the upper 30s and I left it there for a week in the fermenter still. Following that, I transferred it into the keg, I put it on gas, and I went ahead and forgot about it for several more weeks. Now it's been sitting on, in the keg and has lagered, which is a German word for stored, for an additional four weeks. And so this has been uh, conditioning for four to five weeks now after fermentation, and that's a pretty much a sweet spot. You can get away with as early as three to four weeks, uh, but I'd prefer a lager after six weeks, actually. And so in this case, uh, this is right at the best drinkable time, in my opinion, but it might even get a little better with another week or two sitting on tap. So without further ado, let's taste this thing and see how it turned out. The one thing you notice right away is absolutely how crystal clear this beer is. It is super clear. There might be a smidge of cloudiness left that will hopefully drop out, but it's hard to tell because this glass is really, really sweating in my garage. It's because it's a little warm in here. 
But other than that, it is a very crystal clear beer. I'd be happy getting this at any brewery whatsoever or out of a, or out of a bottle or a can. But I expect this to be even clearer in the next couple of weeks as this has another week of conditioning left. It's got a nice, it also has a nice white frothy head on it and it does maintain that uh, that frothy head and lacing as we drink this down the glass. But let's go through smells and see if we can pick up any hints of those limes that we were going for. So I don't get a whole lot of lime uh, aroma um, in this one. Maybe a little bit. I do smell, you know, the beer uh, aroma in there. Not real malty, but it does smell crisp and clean. But not, lot, not a lot of aroma, but you wouldn't expect that for a Mexican lager either. So let's go in for the real thing and give her a taste. And that is a solid summer beer. It's clean, it's crisp, it is crushable good. And you get that hint of a little bit of hint of lime just at the back end, like we were talking about. Um, in this one, I added two ounces of Motika hops and I just get that little hint of lime flavor, which is what I'm going for. None of that over zesty or soapy flavor like I'd gotten with the lime zest when I used it in the previous beer. If you haven't checked out that video, don't add the lime zest or you could really be in a problem. I'll have that linked in the video description below. But I had to dump that beer because of the lime zest I added. But I really like the Mexican lager yeast that the flavors are coming out in. You get that lager flavor, but it's not overpowering and it lets the rest of the beer shine through. That crispness, you get that little hint of bitterness and you get the little hint of limes and it's not covered up by an overly lager flavor, which I think is perfect. Again, summer beer, I'm gonna be crushing this one all day long. And I could even add a, a lime wedge in here also if I wanted to, to kick it up a notch even further. So for this one, I've decided I'm entering this into some competitions because it is amazing. I would highly, highly recommend brewing this beer. And as always, I'm gonna have that full recipe down in the video description below, so you can go ahead and check that out. And as a channel member, you'll be able to get those videos early and get the priority special recipes that you get as a perk of being a member. So you can hit that join button down here in order to become a channel member. It helps out the channel, you get the brew day sheets, and you get some priority recipes to help you brew awesome beer. You also get access to me. You can email me anytime you want, and you guys as channel members will get a response right away, guaranteed, with any questions whatsoever. So with that, guys, Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and the lithogram for YouTube. I appreciate each and every one of you. Happy brewing and cheers. Hey, thanks for watching my video. I really do appreciate it. A way you can support the channel is just by buying me a beer. There's a button right there on the screen and there's a link in the video description below. You can also check out the Merchandise Center store and you can hit the video on the screen right now. You know you want to.